How many of you have used additive manufacturing or often called 3D printing? Uh, the GDP for metal AM is going to increase by 22% per, before 2020. In the last five years, the GDP for metal AM has actually tripled. When I got into metal AM 12, 13 years ago, there were only three FDA approved metal AM parts or even AM parts, period. And as of this May, there are 300 FDA approved metal AM parts. I think it is very, very timely to see how mechanical engineers can position ourselves in this, in this exciting uh, topic. So I went to NC State for my uh, graduate program. I very quickly realized that everything that we learned uh, in material science or in mechanics or in finite element needs to be adopted for additive manufacturing. So I developed an appreciation for powder metallurgy because the way powder flows is going to affect the way your printer works. I developed an appreciation to how to use different SEM techniques because that helps me get an understanding of what's going on in the process. It also gave me an opportunity to work with uh, very interesting uh, case studies. For example, we designed and developed the first total knee replacement for a cat in the entire world. The knee replacement was about this small. So it was pretty exciting uh, to work on all these different topics. Everything I do in my lab or everything I've learned in my lab, I learned an appreciation for how the industry perceives it and how it could be presented as a solution if it is a solution to the industry. So it was a good balance between uh, uh, doing research in the lab, understanding what the industry needs are, where the industry is right now, and whatever we are doing in the lab, could it be used in the next three to five years? I always say you have to check one or preferably all three boxes before you use additive manufacturing. One, it has to be highly customized design. Two, it has to be highly complex, either the design or the material. Three, you just need a few of them. So how do we look at, mecha as mechanical engineers, how do we look at uh, additive manufacturing? One, I would say this, we have all the tools we need we understand material selection, we understand the design process, we understand computational evaluation, whether it is FEA, CFD, we understand mechanical testing, we understand uh, uh, you know, fatigue testing, we understand evolution, uh, ev statistical evaluation. But how do we take all of these tools and apply it to a new field like additive manufacturing? I would say this, we have to expand our palette. So FEA by default is not designed for anisotropic behavior. So there we go. If you are working in that particular field, expand your, uh, 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 go, go dig a little deeper in terms of modeling anisotropic behavior. So having said all of this, I do want to caution one thing, which is it is highly dynamic. In the maturity cycle where additive manufacturing is right now, pick one particular aspect of the entire additive manufacturing, for example, design, or for example, materials or for example, uh, processing or post-processing, pick one and continue to explore that. Because the technology is evolving, the machines are getting better and better. One thing I do is, I do go to one particular industry expo on additive manufacturing every year. Uh, it's not probably the most robust when it comes to peer reviews, but I still manage to go there by giving one presentation and I go there just for one day. You know why? I get to see what is the latest software pro solutions that is being offered. I get to see who are the latest manufacturers. I get to see what is the latest technology. So keep yourself updated because until in the next 10 to 15 years, when RIT manufacturing is fully matured as a plug and play, just like any other advanced manufacturing processes, it is going to be dynamic. So final takeaways uh, that I want to emphasize on. One, it is uh, highly dynamic. Pick one or two topics that you are specifically passionate about and run with it. Pick something that's fun and exciting, that you know you are excited, you want to come and work and go to the lab or do something. I said, yeah. And if somebody is willing to pay for it, then that's your job. So pick that one thing that you would do for free and have fun doing it, then that's your job. Thank you.